So turn on the vehicle. Okay. There. So. Yeah. There is. There are four modes. Okay. Here um, in the Acura NSX, um, we have our integrated dynamic um, system, the IDS, um, which we're familiar with with Acuras, uh, with the rotary dial here. Um, we just started in sport mode. There is quiet, sport, sport plus, and track. Okay. So um, it's default to start in, in sport. If you'd like, you can program it to, to start in quiet mode. Um, if you didn't want to be that guy at 5 in the morning. But what if you do want to be that guy? You can totally be that guy, too. <laughs> so you have options, which is lovely. Um, so the IDS affects 11 aspects of the vehicle. Anywhere from the... Um, the shift mapping, steering, certainly sound is a big deal, um, throttle response, uh, brake pedal, um, suspension, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So actually, okay. if we look at the TFT meter Everything. in the middle, I'm going to take you back to quiet. This kind of just shows you a little oh, okay. illustration. Yeah, it's got some... And you can kind of hear there. And then if we hold to the right three seconds, we get into track mode. We won't unfortunately be doing that today. Danger. I know. Fun, no sliding, huh? So okay. we'll start in uh, we'll start in quiet mode. All right. And we can uh, with our nine DCT, just you can select drive when you're ready to go. Okay. Nine speed dual clutch transmission. Yes. And you were saying that that's unique. This is the only. Yep. It's vehicle it's that's bespoke in. made specifically for NSX. So wow. we do enjoy um, nine DCTs in other vehicles in the Acura lineup. But the nine DCT, what's great about this is that you've got first gear is launch mode. Ninth is cruising. Okay. All the other ones in between are close ratio. Close ratio, and mm -hmm. um, all of the gears are parallel next to each other, so it's nice and compact. And you're also able to yep. shift really quickly. Super fast say. shifts. Nine DCT. So you've got one through five on one, and two through eight on another. Yeah, you got it. So, um, so as we kind of talked a little bit this morning, um, we've got a 3.5 liter um, uh, twin turbo. Uh, V6, yep. 70, 75 degree bank, so we're keeping the mass nice and low in the center. It's okay, I was going to ask, why why 75 versus 60? It keeps it, keeps it low. So that's low a slightly center. wider yes. profile. You got it. Yep. Okay. Um, that has a, a direct drive motor, so the first of three electric motors, which we'll talk about, um, is applied on the crankshaft that sends okay. uh, energy directly to the DCT. Um, then we in the front here we've got what we call the twin motor unit. So that those are engines two and or motors two and three. Okay. See, Nick's got me talking engines now. Yeah. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> um, and uh, you probably know better than anybody that <laughs> we've been at this torque vectoring game for about 25 years now. Yep. Yep. You and guys have it. It's awesome. The the torque vectoring in the what was it the MDX mm -hmm. also has it front and rear. Yes. Yeah. It's really cool how that car feels. Um, yep. And I'm sure this just, you know, takes it to a whole nother level. So I'm going to switch this up in the sport. I don't know. It's hard. It's this such, such a short loop. But sure, yeah. you can kind of hear different things and hopefully feel different things as well. Um, I think for the freeway, it's yeah. more pluses for spirited driving, more winding roads, that okay. sort of thing. Um, knowing that we do have a good off on-ramp, yep. um, we'll try that while being safe. Of course. Of course. We've got um, traction control on. It's all good. Um... But uh, we were talking about oh, so the you were talking about the super handling all-wheel drive system in, yes, the, in yes. the MDX. So that's a lovely system. We are splitting torque to send it to the left and right. Right, right. With that's this, different because it's a differential rather than electric motors. Right. So yes. Here we're generating torque directly and independently. Yep. You know, managing the yep. left and right. So how much power is on the front axle and how much is on the rear axle? Yep. I am. Um, have that for you here. There's a lot of numbers, so right I never can no, that's, directly, that's but um, so just to kind of break it down, so with the V6, that generates 500 horsepower um, wow. at 7,500 wow. RPM. Okay. Um, max torque is 406, so you're getting a lot from that engine. Um, just the engine is 500? Yes. Oh my. Um, total is 573 horsepower and 470, yeah. oh, and we're going to switch to Sport Plus okay. at this point. Wait until this straightens out a little bit and then feel what that's like. <laughs> yes! Those shifts 
tracks are amazing too. <laughs> super smooth and super fast. That is awesome. Wow. Okay. So we got we got lost a little in numbers. It was yep. five hundred for the engine, and yep. then and then what does the electric motors? What are those? Sorry. Um, well, just to go through it specifically. So okay. the, the TMU, each one on uh, delivers thirty six horses. Okay. Um, at four thousand RPM, and then the fifty four foot pounds of torque each. Oh, nice downshifts. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely getting a lot more traffic now. Yeah. Now that we're in the afternoon, so. Okay, so 36 for each motor up front. Yep. And then the electric motor in the rear. I'm was that combined with the 500 or no, was that? Okay. No, that's independent. So, um, I get to giddy with the, here we go, direct drive motor, 47 uh, horsepower. Okay, cool. At 3,000 RPM and 109 foot pound of torque. So the, wow. the direct drive motor is giving you torque fill. Right, so it's, it's help assisting. Yeah, the second you put your foot down, you've got. Uh, yeah, the moment that your foot touches throttle. Yeah. Yeah, which is cool, especially with turbocharged engines, because you've got that turbo lag, so you want to have something that makes up that gap. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So it's best of both worlds there. Um, and then in the front, the, the TMU is um, continuously enhancing you know, all aspects of the dynamic performance. Acceleration certainly is a no-brainer. Um, right. Braking, you know, is you've got that beautiful marriage of the electro servo and the hydraulic uh, yeah. rumbo brakes, um, and then and then cornering. We talked a little bit about torque vectoring as well. So yeah, um, very so cool. All in all, you're benefiting from that um, that those electric motors in concert with that V6. Yeah, and I think it's cool. I mean. I was expecting, but I think it's cool the way you have it. The the power for the front motors is fairly low, and so it's still like a very heavily rear bias system, and that's great for you know sportiness. So you can, I'm I'm sure you can you know play with this thing and get that rear end a little happy because you've got so much more power in the right. rear than in the front. Right. right. It's, a, it's kind of a small amount up front. Um, yeah, that's While awesome. Keeping, keeping the car balanced, of course. Right. You know all of that. So. Yeah, and you were saying the CG was lower. You listed quite a few cars. I mean, that was pretty fascinating. You said the 458. Yeah, um, the 458, the uh, the R8, the okay. uh, the previous gen when we were benchmarking this, and then uh, uh, the 911 as well. Okay. So, is there a battery pack for the? There is. Yeah, where it's actually right behind us. Okay. Um, so that is, if you've been looking on your meter, there is a the gauge there, and you can see the battery's full at okay. this point. Okay. We're because we're, we're in sport mode, so yeah. it's just running the engine. Yeah, we're in sport. Okay. Exactly. Um, if we we could probably switch, we can if you want. I'm fully up to you, but in sport, we can try them. I, nah, it's your, we, your call. We don't, we don't need. Yeah, we'll we don't need battery. We'll go back to sport. <laughs> um, <laughs> You it's it's good to hear it. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. Like, sure, from day to day, if I happen to have enough cash, I might put it in that battery mode. But I, then go. again, if I had that much cash, maybe not. So, there who you knows? Go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mentioned earlier, too, um, that this has 11 heat exchangers. Yes. So, I thought it'd be kind of fun whether or not. Maybe I don't know if you know all of eleven, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to to try and guess them. I'm a better visual person. Okay. I can show you. We can we can okay. maybe walk. So does the it. engine have more than one? I would really rather just show you the the oh, okay. image you have, as well. You have yeah, the image? I okay. think that'll be more interesting. Okay. For you. No, sure. Because I was for thinking your, for your viewers. Certainly. Yeah, I was thinking the engine probably has one or two. Yeah. You've got maybe two intercoolers because it's twin yep. turbocharged. Yep. Um, you've got a transmission cooler, I would imagine, yep. Yep. differential. Yep. Uh, you've got, well, you've got the condenser for the air conditioning system. Mm -hmm. You also have the evaporator for the air conditioning system. You also have a heater cooler, the air conditioning system. So I don't know if those three would count, but they are all technically heat yeah. exchangers. Yeah. And I'm like at eight-ish, and then okay. I'm, I'm kind of stumped. Maybe a differential. I don't know if I said Maybe that. There's one for the... Uh the, the electric idea. motors? Well, yep, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So one of the things, actually, I used to do design work uh, with heat exchangers. Uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting is cooling for electric items is at a much lower temperature than cooling for the engine. Mm -hmm. 
And so it makes it challenging because your temperature differential between outside and your electronics is very small. So you need larger radiators. So you have these different temperatures and, and it can make it a challenge, but obviously it's packaged into this beautiful sure. Well, and, and what's, what, what the team is so proud about um, is that this design uh, is all functional. So we've talked about how the, the aerodynamics of yeah. this car, um, there is no active aero and um, in part with the aero story um, and then just the general development of this car. It's rare that the production car is more aggressive than the show car and that's what we ended up having here. Oh really? Which is really exciting. So what was different with the, uh, the concept? Well as you probably have heard the story we changed the 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 engine midway through the power train okay midway yes through yes development so we have this beautiful vehicle and then they had to find a way to make all of everything work and fit right so was it originally going to be transverse yeah it was going to be a transverse v6 and okay. it was a good it was a good engine um, yeah but they looked at it and they said you know what for the nsx we'd like to step it up yeah so um, why not so and hence why the uh this hybrid system is, was born and we were so excited to have that sport hybrid powertrain for sure. So yeah, um, I think it's a cool future for the future of like supercars. Getting that instant torquing with electric motors. I mean, people like to give electric vehicles crap, but you know, you can't you can't complain with instant torque. Like it's just amazing. Yeah, I mean, there are it. so many different kinds of cars. Stepping right. out of it, just looking at the right. uh, the automotive industry. How many different kinds of cars? Now this is a okay, tough yeah. one. We're gonna because I can't see anything. A, so there is a separate. This is a hard turn. There's so many different types of cars, right? We've had those for for years. Right. And, yep. and I think people have looked at electric cars maybe narrowly, and this is just my personal opinion, but um, we look to employ the electric motors from a performance aspect. You're getting the most out of the vehicle mm -hmm. with the electric motors and then that, that wonderful twin turbo V6. Heck yeah. So, you know, you're benefiting from those electric motors from, an, from a fuel and mileage perspective. We're getting 20 city, 22 highway Heck in, yeah. in this supercar. So, <laughs> right. yeah. you know, not bad getting out of that gas guzzler tax right. and all of that. Um, but we are some, you know, we are a performance brand. Our mantra here is precision crafted performance at Acura. So precision crafted performance. And that's what we, what's what we had. That was our, our advertising tagline back in the day. And we're bringing that back as our, I really our liked, uh, I don't know if you guys still do it. Aggression in its most elegant form. I thought that was, <laughs> that was awesome. And you had all the like sports players and they're like all dressed up and then you'd like break them down and they're like sweating and playing. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Nice. <laughs> So, I drive an Acura Integra 99, uh, so I, I kind of yeah. get the experience you here. Totally it's very get, similar to... So you feel like there, there's some lineage Oh, there. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I feel right That's at great. home in this. That's great. Yeah. I mean, mine's, <laughs> mine's got like, you know, it was stolen and someone left cigarette ash in it. But wow. aside from that, like, it's pretty much just, just identical. Have you spent time in the original NSX? I have not. No, okay, I'd, okay. I'd love to get in one of those. Um, yeah, they're they're crazy and they've just held their value so well i've even looked at yeah buying them and they're just they're never going to go down in price it would have been a lovely really <laughs> smart investment decision for me before we made announcements that we were looking to <laughs> bring it back yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. i missed that window i've but. looked at like salvaged ones and they're still like 20 something and it's like yeah guys this is crazy but there's a lot of heritage points um that I can speak too hard that, you know, you haven't spent time in, in the original NSX yet, but um, NSX was known for its superb visibility and thin A-pillars. Now we obviously have way more safety regulations that we yeah, need to address. Yeah, these are actually pretty thin. But yeah, and what's a cool um, uh, engineering and manufacturing story here, um, we were able to get the A-pillars uh, to be so thin now and 2016. So it's a process called three-dimensionally quenched and bent. Um, this this steel, um, to where you get this nice, you know, this uh, nice long um, and curved line that, that okay. the, the vehicle had demanded, and um, the structure is so solid, and the the it's the width of it is just a, a quarter. It's this nice, perfectly hollow. Um, yeah. A pillar, so you it's thin and it is so supportive and strong. And it's set up perfectly this. for the driver where it's oriented the right way. I mean, you get in cars yeah. still today, and it's like, guys, <laughs> you oriented the, the worst angle so that it's as fat as can be for the driver. Right. Yeah. So, um, so that's iconic.
on it to the original. Um, certain design cues exterior wise, certainly the uh, the haunches, the intercooler side intercoolers and intakes yeah. are yeah. obviously huge. Well, those old ones, I mean this one too obviously, but the old ones are just gorgeous and they stayed that way. Like to this day they still look amazing. Yeah, we wanted the, you know, the design to be classic and, and timeless and um, I think the original has certainly proven to be that and I think that this yeah. one's this yeah, I don't know if this looks sure. classic or not, but it certainly looks We're amazing. Timeless, you know. I think <laughs> yeah, timeless is, better, I think, a good word. Better word to go. Um, there's other little things like the uh, there's a there's a black roof, right? So that was another classic NSX. Okay. Is it is it carbon fiber the panel they up there? Put on the option of a carbon fiber. Yeah, okay. But it, uh, if you know the this the car without customization is a black roof. Okay, so, so whatever color it is. Um, whatever color, so if it's a red car, it'll have the, the black roof. Okay, all right. Yeah, because this one's black, so. Yeah. And this is actually a heritage color, so um, this is, it's called Berlina Black, and it was one of the original NSX colors. Oh, very cool. So we cool. brought some heritage with that, too. But with modern paint technology. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yep. Right on. That's awesome. Yeah, so trying to maintain that, the heritage that it made NSX so special um, yeah. while creating a new sparse experience for it today. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, so that's I've only I, heard great things about people who have driven those older ones. I mean, they just seem like amazing, amazing cars. And they changed the game, you know, when they were introduced to the yeah, market in 1980 yeah, calendar year. And um, I think that this car is doing the same in today's market. Yeah. Well, Ellie, thank you so much oh, for this. Pleasure. This has been awesome to take out. I really appreciate it. Oh, we're so it. excited to have it here. So, yeah. and have and folks like you drive it. So, Heck yeah. Thank you. Oh, this is amazing.